Hi everyone. So welcome from uh, what I'm calling this white label PPC headquarter of the world, Austin, Texas. <laughs> All right. And I just shamelessly stole that from Armadillo headquarter uh, from Thread Guilds in Austin. And Justin knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. So that's what we're going to call ourselves. We are the white label PPC headquarter of the world uh, here in Austin. So looking forward to this. I'm really excited about this one more so than any other webinars. I'll tell you why. Uh, as some of you guys know, my background is engineering. So I like nuts and bolts and grease. This is really going under the hood, actually working on the engine kind of a webinar. It's not one of those how to 10x your business, you know, five things you need to do to scale. It's not one of those webinars. It's actually really getting dirty and seeing how things are really done in Google Ads. So I'm very excited. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Avi. And me, I'm Justin, the president and co-owner of Invisible PPC. Um, and on the Cooler side of things, run uh, all of the, the marketing uh, initiatives there. Uh, please connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, that's my actual email. It's not one of those fake ones. I'm not crazy enough to put my phone number out there because a lot of people just create burner phones. So you're not going to be able to text me, but shoot me an email, jump on LinkedIn uh, if you have any questions regarding, you know, white label PPC or anything along those lines. Um, cool. Well, we'll skip. You don't need to talk too much about me there. So um, just real quick, if you're new to Invisible PPC, uh, who we are and what we do, we're a done-for-you white label service uh, for only for agencies. Uh, we've been doing this for 11 years. Uh, we manage your clients. You manage the client relationship and billing. We take care of the rest. We run all the ads and we run this exact playbook we're about to show you today. Um, I mean, you can steal it, use it yourself. I mean, we're willing to open the kimono and share how we do things, but you'll realize real quick, you might not want to. Um, so uh, moving on. Uh, if you do need any help, if you realize, Hey, I'm one of those people that don't want to be doing that. Uh, just go to partners.invisiblepc.com slash book a call. You can, uh, chat with Anna. Um, this is really the only thing we're promoting today. Just want to make sure that if you're interested in ads, this is that we're going to be in full content mode after this. All right. So, uh, moving on. So quickly, what we'll cover is we're going to be setting some boundaries first because Google is a very broad animal there. And uh, we want to make sure that, um, we're being specific in how we're doing this. Uh, so then we're going to be talking a little bit about like, you know, how Google is impacting the small business market, um, why you need to be knowing your business, our actual naming conventions, campaign structures, and then everything else that goes into the checklist. So we have a lot of stuff here, but the key is that we really do want to set some boundaries because there is no such thing as one size fits all for Google. That's just a fact. All right. So let's move on. So, yeah, it is. Google Ads is very, very broad and we have one hour. So what we're going to focus on today is very specifically search ad for local services business. A lot of the stuff we will say will apply across the board in other things because there's common parts of the setup in Google ads. But real, this is the reason this one is the key part of the Google ads, I feel, is this is where you got to have a positive ROI, otherwise client leaves. This is what really Google originally started with, right? You do a search, you find a business and you do business with them, right? So this this is this is like, you got to be really good uh, at uh, Google Ads to achieve results in this with very small budgets, actually. Also, lo local service businesses do not have much budget. So you don't have, you don't have much, you don't have a very long window to fail. You got to succeed right away. That's what we're going to focus on. In some ways, the hardest uh, business to do on uh, Google or where optimization matters. So that's all we're talking about today, all right? Uh, as I said, it is very broad, but other thing which is lost is uh, I know the iceberg is a like, hey, this is like iceberg with, uh, you know, under the water is much more than outside is used, overused. But in case of Google ads, this is really, really true. The actual setup, the mechanical part of actually going and doing and setting up the uh, campaign, which you can find from Google. There are tutorials on there and all. That's actually minuscule part of, very small part of Google Ads. The bigger part is the preparation research insight from experience of what are the things you do, what kind of structure you'll build. So we'll be covering a lot of that. But that being said, we will actually do the Google Ads setup. We will actually go through the setup beyond the checklist. Uh, we will do it. And uh, and we will show you the what other important things are. So just keep this in mind that it is... There is a lot more goes to Google Ads, and you will see uh, enough of it here to get an idea why I say this. Uh, now, Google versus uh, us. 
anybody who's practicing, who's doing Google ads. Google is generally going towards more automation and reduce control to us who are doing Google ads. That's the direction Google has been continuously pushing. It's not our friend. And if you don't believe me, just ask Department of Justice. So Google will do things behind the scenes which will not necessarily will be helpful to you as a client. The advice you'll get from Google many times, we have noticed consistently the Google's advice, the Google's recommendations, 60 to 80% of those recommendations are beneficial to Google, not to your account actually for performance, right? So, so when Google comes and says, we will, uh, Google says, we'll offer you free help and all, just be beware. What they're trying to do is optimize for them. Google is the house. Here's an article on, uh, uh, on US Wire you can check out later. And in fact, you could use this article to explain this to your clients why them directly working with Google, which is free, is not the great idea, right? So this is a active link. When you get this presentation, uh, you can go to this link and use the information there. So just the thing, big thing to remember here is that they are taking control away. And we as people who practice this, we actually do this day in and day out. We want as much control on settings as you can get. So when you see these knobs and all, whenever there is a choice between auto versus us controlling, you will notice that almost always we leave it so that we can control. That's how we get good performance. So that's the big takeaway here that we want control because we want visibility. We don't want a black box. That's the way we can control and get better performing ads. Um, that was the general thing. If any question comes up, because we're going to be running through this time-wise, Justin, do flag the questions as they come yeah, along. Absolutely. Don't, not don't not too much that. coming in. Mostly people being like, yep. <laughs> and we, yeah. we, we know that uh, that Google is in it for themselves. Yes. And then, then this is the one which a lot of agencies we work with, they miss this. They come to us, they want us to do ads, but they have not taken time to understand their client's business. This is very, very important that you understand the client's business. So in fact, we have created this as part of the checklist. So when you see the checklist, some portions I'll cover as I go through, rest you'll get in the end. Um, but the important ones I wanted to cover up front. First thing and very first thing before you take on any Google Ads account, you need to understand the business. What business niche is it? If they are plumbers, do they do every kind of plumbing or the only certain kind of plumbing, right? Who do they serve? What areas do they serve, right? Uh, that is very, very important. It might seem so obvious once you read through the questions, but we run into this all the time when it is not clear. If you are a chimney sweep, do you also do chimney repairs? Or is it only chimney sweep? Those details are very, very important because when you're running ads, you will get, if you use general terms, you'll get people for both. If you don't do one of the service and somebody is clicking, you're paying Google. You don't want that. So knowing what you don't do is as important as knowing what you do, what your customer does in that business, right? Of course, other things are obvious at how much money you want to spend. What is the target CPA? How much they're willing to pay? Uh, uh, in, in marketing, many times customers kind of feel, why you want to know that? Are you trying to extract the most money from you? In case of Google, it's nothing like that. It's simple as the fact that we're going to produce some results for you. You will get some acquisitions, basically conversions. Those conversions, how much you're willing to pay? That tells us whether we can go and check with Google. We can check with the existing old data uh, we have and, and other things we can run studies to figure out that whether it is even possible. Because if it's not possible, don't run the Google ads. If you're not willing to pay that much for the lead, don't run Google ads because you'll be disappointed, right? Uh, and other, other one, which is very important is, this is the other one we run into. How many leads can they really manage? It's not uncommon for us to say, hey, we're getting too many, we cannot handle. We are a dentist service. We have only 30% capacity. There is too many coming in can't handle anymore, right? You need to know that in advance so you can throttle it or you can pause it and manage the number of leads, right? Uh, be very, very clear when you're working with clients. We like to do that with our agencies and push them to go get the agreement on which list of services they want to highlight. How many different services they want to push at the same time? Because if it is, to, uh, if it is a dentist who's also an orthodontist, those are two different services. The way you promote them is very different. You cannot use one versus the other. You cannot combine them. Those are two different niches. You'll have to set up two completely different 
almost independent business like campaigns for those niches it's important to get that you know get everything clear from them other important one is you should always get a commitment of at least 3 months from your client otherwise just don't tell them just don't get into google ads because it'll take 3 months to start getting those kind of cpas which historically you will quote for them or results you'll come back with you know first 3 4 weeks it's just collection of data actually does do don't leads don't come in no of course they do come in this is not seo so you'll actually have leads coming in first first month but they'll be very expensive leads so first 3 4 weeks is going to just collecting data then you're optimizing next 3 4 weeks and finally last 4 weeks things get uh, uh, really tuned in and you start getting a good cpa so get a 90 day 3 month commitment before you start any work right uh, and, and and you should really be very clear any out of scope request they might say oh while i'm running this ad can i run this kind of ad to can i promote this service to can i run a one more offer one more offer means one more landing page so that's going to be extra work and separate work be very clear the last one is not as obvious but very very important there are clients who want volume and we have some legal clients they say i don't care how much it costs just get me more leads the better i'll keep spending money that's volume they just don't care about roi there are other clients who are saying it's going to if it is going to be more than 300 300 per lead it doesn't work for my plumbing service so please keep the uh, lead no more than 300 so the roi is very important they they cannot have both you got to pick a side why when you go for volume you going to be trying to take over the whole market you will keep bidding higher and higher and higher the cost will keep going up higher so one easy way to get your roi is by the way drop your budget if you drop your budget usually in almost every market and every every segment you'll realize that your roi goes up so when you're spending lot more money your roi goes down so it's not like you spend more money you get more efficient you don't because the cost of that search which you're competing for will be higher at a higher volume so it should you should be very clear with your client that hey do they really care about roi and what point it's too much for them versus they really care about volume that just give me all right and we, i mean you might be thinking oh there's no such client no we have multiple clients like yeah, that they, they exist they yeah. they want to corner the entire market and that is yeah. very very difficult that's very expensive right yeah. but when they're in a, they're in a and i i say a lot and obviously mm-hmm. heard me say this too much and he might not agree with me totally but like most industries aren't zero sum but there are some things that that you're like that that are yes. um i think with some of our law clients specifically like oh my gosh like we need to capture yeah, and, the entire and the other thing, one is the investment clients how much many times yes yes they they just say hey because from their point of view they just get two or three clients they make enough money so they just want the everybody there right so okay so that's the business understand so i i have to rush through there is no choice so i'm kind of highlighting but you will have all these slides so you will know very specifically all right so uh uh naming conventions so this is the naming convention we use you could use you could build your own the reason we use naming convention is i want as a practitioner i want to be able to see the name of the campaign or the ad group and immediately know quite a few things about it just by the name especially when you're running multiple clients in our case, case hundreds of clients which will translate into literally thousands of ads running at the same time if you see an ad i want to be able to tell where it came from what it is so this is the naming convention we use basically so our there are uh, we come up with three to five letter acronym for the business in upper case then we come up with a our own code right which we use to know this is our ad there's other advantage of that this is when we take over somebody's account we know by looking at this these are our ads versus somebody else set up so it's like any agency code whatever you could uh, you want to create for yourself and then sc is basically speaking to the fact that it's a search campaign so we know by looking at this oh this is a search campaign by the name itself and whenever we start the campaign creation date because after a while there are so many campaigns and then you start getting confused when did we start that the one we started in july is it working or which one is working right and and so you you, you see the you get the point right you don't have to use exactly this one but is here is ours we're giving it away to you right this is what we use right and we keep evolving it making it better 
But in general, this is what we use for setting up our naming convention. As I said, I'm really getting into the nuts and bolts. I'm telling you whether you need to use the American standard uh, wrench or the, uh, you know, the, the metric wrench. That level of work is what we are trying to go to here. So how does the structure look like? Our campaign st structure for a single niche looks like this. Basically, usually there are two to four. Did we? Yes, it was here. Number of campaigns is two to four and ad groups is two to three. So that's being shown here for you. Anything in Dash is optional. You might not have a secondary campaign. In fact, if you have less than $5,000 budget, you'll probably not have a secondary campaign. Everything will be main because if you don't have enough mon money uh, to spend, then you cannot break up uh, the uh, campaigns much, right? So uh, uh, the secondary will appear only once you reach four or $5,000 or more uh, ad spend, then you will do secondary. So the main campaign, ad groups, and then again, the ads could be two to three, right? And uh, uh, just because uh, the retargeting and secondary, they also have, each has three in there, uh, just because of the visually to represent here, I had to, uh, um, I had to collapse those, but it's same format, right? So two to three, two to three. Brand, we always run a brand campaign. We always do a retargeting campaign, right? So those are the two to four uh, campaigns, All right? Uh, this is the other thing which we have set up at a account level or agency level, which we leverage heavily. So we have a global negative keyword list in English and Spanish. These are the keywords which I would say, basically they never convert. These are the keywords, doesn't matter on which, what niche or whatever, they never convert. So it's great to have that upfront. This is a collection which we have created over the time. If you are running agency or if you are getting into this, start creating your own list of the keywords which do not uh, convert. And then you can set it as a global resource and then you can use that as a negative list in any ad you run everywhere, right? So we have English and Spanish, both cases, because there are some Spanish ones which we don't want to be uh, uh, triggering any, we don't want to show our ads on. Then we have negative keywords which are specific to the niche. So if it's a plumbing niche, I keep talking about plumbing because the example we'll be running is plumbing. So if it is a plumbing niche, then there are specific keywords which are for uh, plumbing niche, which are negative keywords. And if it is uh, uh, HVAC, It'll be, if it is a dentist, it's a different list. So we always had, have that. Uh, also, we have, in addition to uh, negative keywords, we also have a starter niche keywords for each niche. Uh, uh, we've been in business for long, so we, we are fortunate to have accumulated for each one of them a starting point already. So we don't have to start from scratch. If you're starting from scratch, that's okay. But the main takeaway here is start building this list, which you can use again and again, especially the negative one, very, very important. Also, uh, Google allows you to set up and share resources. Uh, structure we have a structure template for each niche. We have ad copy template for each niche and account and campaign settings. These are shared resources we start with. So these assets you can accumulate and build. Uh, 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 this is a great way, a great shortcut. Why reinvent the wheel? You know, in the situation, if you will, where you already have done this. So that's what we leverage this for. Uh, do want to remind, we're talking about Google Ads here. We lost, our last webinar was about landing pages. If you don't have a good landing page, you could have amazingly good ad and then end up with a 2% or 3% conversion rate on the other end. Then you're wasted, you're, all your good effort you did for setting up the ad and is wasted. So you want quality landing pages like these. This is the one from, uh, I just copied from the last uh, webinar. And if you guys have not listened to the webinar, how to do a good landing page is a great one uh, uh, for, for building it. Uh, Justin covered a lot of things there about general concepts. And I covered structurally how we do this. Uh, so you should look that up. But just a reminder, you need a good landing page for all this to work. Yeah, that was previously our uh, our highest registered and highest attended webinar until today. So um, today you definitely, and, and I'll, yeah. I'll share our webinars link in the in the chat with everybody. Yeah. So now we do want to actually build a campaign. We'll be building a campaign, uh, but I wanted to show, some of you said that you already do this. So you've seen this. If you don't, I wanted to kind of visually get you prepared 
that this is how it goes, right? Once you're in a Google Ads account, it, this is a blank account and we'll be working this. Uh, actually, John, who's here, will be helping us and taking us through actually building a campaign and showing it to. So first thing is you need a new campaign. You click on it, you get the new campaign button. And other person I want to thank here is Raj, who's here also. Uh, Raj is the one who helped put this together. So this 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 presentation actually, uh, this time, usually we just, Justin and I, we put together all the material and just somebody provides the data. In this case, we had a lot of people helping us because there is so much detail in the in the landing page. So thank you. Uh, just call out to uh, Raj and John here uh, uh, who, who do this day in, day out for helping us get this going. All right. Uh, so uh, the new campaign. And after that, choose the objective. Now, this one is a uh, interesting one. We don't choose the objective, actually. Why? Actually, objective has no impact on your campaign. It just, all it does is whatever you choose, Google will limit what all you can do or not do at the next step. So we have had, had actually some agencies uh, trying to second guess us and say, oh, we had somebody audit and you guys didn't even choose the objective and you're running a campaign. It doesn't matter. In fact, we intentionally don't choose it because it allows us when we go to the next step to make a lot of choices, which will not be if we, once we choose, in this case, if we were choosing one, for this business, we would have chosen leads, by the way. If you really wanted to, for the we are talking about the ones we are talking about, the lead generation campaign, or choose leads. But all it does is basically restricts you at what all you can do. So if you want to really play around, play around with all the options, uh, uh, this is where you this is what you choose. So in our case, we don't choose one, right? So be, uh, again, I'm going to remind this: if you are not very familiar, maybe start with leads in this case. Otherwise, go with this option, which will keep all the all the options open, right? So this, this uh, I want to emphasize this. People, Some people will say, oh, they don't even know this. They didn't even choose the option. No, this is intentional when we do this from our part. So in this case, we are doing search campaign. So we got to select a search campaign type. So obvious, these are campaigns. A little bit about campaigns here. Because we are doing a lead generation campaign, search works really well for us. Uh, uh, for Not for us, for anybody who's doing lead generation. Other uh, important thing. Please do not run search and display campaign at the same time in any lead generation account. Again, do not run search and display campaigns because it's possible to set up a next one as display. We use display for retargeting. That's fine. But don't run search and display at the same time. Why? Display will just suck all your traffic and you lose out and display is not as uh, the conversion rate on display is not very high. The cost per click might be low, but the actual conversion is very low. So you will lose, you will basically not get that many leads if you start doing that. A same, similar thing happens if you run Performance Max at the same time. Right now, at least, we are not recommending for anybody to run Performance Max on the lead generation campaigns. So if you also run Performance Max campaign with the search campaign, Performance Max will suck away those leads and provide you bad quality leads uh, and, and, uh, and you lose out on your search, right? Of course, shopping, uh, video and discovery do not apply in this case because we're talking about uh, lead generation for a business, right? Here. Uh, then, of course, you got to set up the, in our case, the cases we are talking about, which is local service businesses. Usually, most businesses, they want phone calls or and, and phone calls and lead form submission. Some situations, they just phone calls. There is no form submission. So of course, accordingly, we will not choose lead submission, but it'll be one of uh, it'll be one of the two or two both. Uh, both together is quite common uh, in these situations. The phone number, if you are using uh, tracking number, then use the tracking number. Otherwise, the business number. We always use tracking number. A tracking number is basically a number which is in between, which gets called, and that forwards to the actual business number. You are able to record and track the quality of calls and be able to report to your, uh, uh, we use call tracking metrics. There are other platforms you can use for that. That really makes it easy to show your clients that what is happening and, and be able to audit all the calls for quality, right? Then of course the campaign name, as you notice that we followed our convention, uh, bidding. There are times where you have historical data on that account. That account has been running and you're taking over then maybe in that situation, you can set the maximum cost per click. Otherwise, we don't recommend that because we want to discover that data, right? 
So, and we want to start with clicks, not with conversions. In fact, if you notice the conversion is not even available in as option. If it is a new account, there'll be no conversions yet. So, which means Google cannot optimize for conversion. Eventually we will change over to conversion once we get enough conversions, but we always start out with clicks. So if brand new accounts, we just want the traffic, get the click, get some conversions, then we'll move on. Ah. We do start with including search partners. For a brand new account, including search partners does provide a lower cost per click and overall just more clicks for the same money. Once we are running, we do separate, look at the conversions quality from Google search partners versus Google's search directly. And if we find the quality difference, you've got to do the actual math behind it to look at the numbers that what is the cost per uh, actual conversion for Google partners versus the main Google, the search. And if you find that they are equally good search partners because they are cheaper, there's no doubt, then keep it. Otherwise, switch it off after some time. Why start with it? Because initially you just want a lot of traffic. So you want to be broad. That's the general rule. You want to start with the broader keywords, then you start narrowing down. When you're starting a brand new campaign, you just want to not try to uh, guess and think that you're already right. You want to get the traffic getting in. And that's why I said first few weeks are uh, the, the cost per acquisition is going to be high because you're not that targeted. You, basically, your funnel is bigger when you start out. And it's then you start narrowing down. You start dialing it down as you go forward. Uh, we don't want to use display network for sure in this case uh, because this is a search lead ads. So uh, start with this Google search partners, but uh, not the display networks and eventually switch it off later. Uh, of course, locations uh, in this important part, almost all, there might be very special situations. Real estate might be one of them where you might choose the other option, presence or interest. Because real estate is a situation where you might be in a different city. You might be in London and you're looking at Austin to buy something in Austin. So somebody showing interest while living somewhere else is different. But otherwise, for local service businesses, you want presence regularly in because you're not going to be scheduling a plumber to come in while you're in London for an Austin home. So it's possible, but that's a, such a small likelihood. We don't want uh, to waste money on, uh, on that. So this is the option almost always you'll choose for local service business. Hey, Avi, real quick, but um, I know we we had passed this already, but someone kind of got this question late, but they just really, it's conceptually, what are Google search partners? Just so for anybody who's unaware what those are and like why, and to kind of explain why we have that as a, that, that maybe we'd be in the minority yeah. so that we kind of Basically what that Google has that. done is when you do a search for a keyword, there are properties on which the ads can show up from Google. And those properties might have an affinity to your search. It could be a plumbing site, right? It could be a, a Google, uh, it could be a blog which talks about how different ways to fix things. So those are Google search partners, right? So that's where the ad shows up versus, so the Google search partner is, is anywhere else, but the search page. So the standard is the search page. If the ad actually shows up on some other place, that's a Google search partner. Does that help? I think that that does see if that okay. if that helped out. It was an anonymous, not anonymous person in here. It's like okay. wanted to make sure. I think they didn't want to be uh be yeah. shouted out for not knowing. But okay, it's so always, when you there's do no search, bad whatever you see on the search, that's the regular search. Partners is any other site anywhere uh, where Google can show the ad because of the affinity. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, audience segments is great. You can in this case, if it is a plumbing service, you pick the plumbing service, and we don't want targeting. Targeting means it'll take your uh, geography and everything and it'll narrow it. We don't want narrow, we want observation. We basically want to see the, how many of the plumbing services want uh, come back to you. So because we are targeting through geo and otherwise based on the search, because we are targeting based on the search keyword anyway. So this one uh, search is, the intent is very high in case of search. So we don't need to narrow down anymore. So choose the observation mode and you can choose the whichever business you are working with. Uh, not every business is represented, but many are. So you can you can choose those, right? 
This is the other one, right? Optimize. So uh, best performing ads automatically. We don't want Google to do that. Google will quickly decide on one ad and just keep running that. We want to run, rotate through all ads. And we'll look at the performance of each ad and then we will decide. Again, this requires more manual work. Again, I told you, remember, they want to automate everything. Google wants to take control and just do it. But we can always do better than what Google will do by actually looking through this. And now Google keeps taking these you know, options slowly away, uh, but it's uh, it always hurts us when they take an option away of any of these. Uh, ad schedule. Big thing here is that even if you're running ads 24 seven, break it up into schedules like this, where you run 24 seven, but break it up into three schedules, like seven to 5 p.m., five to 10, 10 to seven. This is a good example of any kind of a service business timing. The timings could be a little different. Why? Then you can observe the data and find that, hey, maybe seven to 5 p.m., this is, I'm going to give you insight, which you can go and use for your service business. 7 to 5 p.m., plumbing ads are very expensive. Most plumbers work those kind of hours. They want to answer the calls during that time only. Guess what? 5 to 10 p.m., there are a lot of calls. Why? Because people are getting off work and they call for that service. So if you have a, even an answering service, at five to 10, you should leverage that time. And actually you can get a lot cheaper leads, five to 10. All you have to do is that service has to do is schedule for next day or tell them we'll tomorrow morning, first thing we'll call you and we'll schedule, even if you don't service. Of course, if you're 24 seven, you still want to do that. And by getting that data, you can decide to switch off and switch on. 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. If you do 24 seven service, you want to know that. But what we found is five to 10, at least for plumbing, works really well, right? So those, yeah. those are kind of a things which will only happen if you broke it up. And that if you didn't break it up in the beginning, then you'll be starting new ads and it'll go in learning mode. But by setting up upfront with these segments, you can switch off and switch on. While yeah. that and, and, that, and, and that all comes back to knowing the business. That's why that was the first thing that, that Avi had brought up. And, and Avi, while we're in scheduling, two questions from Dan. Um, is scheduling only available at the campaign level or the group level? Uh, we have a chart for that. Is it on the slides or no? Uh, uh, John, help me out. That's going to be per campaign level. Yeah, thank you. So yeah. we have a, I don't know whether we did not put the slide, right? The, I think it's in there. The slide is there with the, which is available at what level? Campaign. No, I understand it is available campaign. So one of the, this is a great question. So one of the things I always get confused is this same idea, what control is available, what level? So we had put together that in a table. I don't know whether that side slide made it here or not, right? We had definitely put that together and, and uh, I'll try to send that as an addendum because it, we basically went through and did a Google sheet uh, where we said what controls are available at what level? level? Because that's a very, very common scenario to start wondering, hey, what do you want to control where? Okay, great question. Uh, of course, now we are in keywords in this thing. When we go through, we are not going to set this because we have copy and all. So we're going to cancel. In this case, the cancel because we were not ready. So that's why the cancel. You can do it later. Budget, of course. Uh, and, and actually, if you were doing it, you'll not cancel. You'll just go forward, right? Uh, uh, budget, of course. Uh, this is a daily budget, right? So we take the monthly budget, divide by 30. Simple thing. If you're going to be only weekdays, then divide by 20, roughly, right? Uh, so that gives you the budget. And just be, just think through that, by the way. Uh, I, um, I mean, if you don't think through that part of that, hey, if you're working Monday to Friday, don't divide by 30. I've done that mistake myself, actually. Uh, and uh, one of the times when we were talking about it, uh, John was overseeing it and he pointed that out. Hey, it's only, don't divide by 30, the budget. Divide by 20 or 21, right? Kind of weekdays are fewer. You're only spending it on the weekdays in case you're running only on the weekdays, right? So, all right. All uh, right. Publish campaign, we're ready to set going. Uh, we're gonna publish and immediately we'll go into pause mode. It'll not run anyway because things are not there. But usually what we do is set up because we will be going through our checklist before enabling everything. We want to make sure everything is right. So immediately we set everything, then we go to, uh, uh, immediately we go to 
pause at that point. So this is where yeah, nothing beats a live demo. So we want to actually set these up because there is more to it, right? You're thinking, what about the ad? Where is the ad? I mean, what kind of ad copy? How do they get set up? And how, how do you prepare? How do you get the ad copy ready? So those things will become more obvious as we actually do it. So uh, uh, John is going to take it over. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm going to stop presenting. And he will take us through actually populating uh, ads for us. And while he's setting it up, um, I can answer questions. Yeah, there was one I was going to wait till the end, because, uh, but I think conceptually, it's a good time to do it now. Um, so if you open Q&A, Avi, go to um, uh, Monica's question. Yes. It's a, it's a, it's a long one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What would you recommend if we want to follow the sales funnel concept? Start with display, uh, IT ads for awareness, push marketing. Then we have the numbers from display and then switch to consideration phase and do search ads. Yes. That's, that funnel model is for a new starting business. That's right, right? Because your awareness, you have a product which nobody knows about. So you want to start making them aware. Usually, uh, the way, by the way, most funnels work, and Justin has probably worked with more funnels than anybody I know. <laughs> you never run a funnel which is only top or the middle. You run both funnels at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So so that's that's one thing, because there are people in different phases, right? So you want to catch them at, at every end. Then you always need a shortcut also. There are people who are consideration. They are right in the discovery and they love it and they want to buy it, right? That's one of the uh, uh, other things that you want the shortcut. But that idea of funnel is for brand new projects and services. In this case, they you got a leak, right? Or you got a sewer backing up. You're not in a discovery that, hey, this is a plumbing problem. You want a plumber yesterday. So that's why the search ads work so well for service businesses because it's like a immediate thing. They're already in market. So there we don't have to worry about taking get, taking them through the discovery and all, all other phases. We just directly jump to, hey, you need this. The only thing we are not doing is the conversion because we don't have the conversion data. They will actually convert. So we're saying just the click is good enough for us. Click is a good enough indicator that they clicked, they probably are interested. And let's collect some data on conversion. Then we can, uh, 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 then we can uh, 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 get some of those out. Because, it's, by the way, example: if you're wondering if somebody is so much ready, then why is not click a direct indication? For example, somebody might be looking for a job; they will click yeah. also. So, if the ad shows up from a local plumber, lot of the people who click on them is people who are looking for a job to work at plumbers. So, you got to get them out somehow. So, there is optimization needed beyond just saying, "Oh, just need the service," so that will convert. Okay, so hopefully that clears that up. All right. Is my screen visible? Yeah. Okay, let's start, Avi. Yes, so go uh, uh, go ahead. I mean, like basically, I'm going to talk through. So he's going to do, uh, yeah, step at a time. As we said, new campaign. He's just following what you guys saw, that create a campaign without a goal. And it's a search one. And we want phone calls. Uh, and in this case, with the website visits is basically because there's going to be a landing page of some kind. No app downloads, a number. Uh, uh, yeah, can you go back to that? Yeah, show us them the landing page. So I know, John, you're really fast at this, but uh, <laughs> can you- can Lightning you, fast. Just, yeah. Can you slow down uh, sure, for sure. the step to show? So the landing page, by the way, this is, uh, the landing page intentionally we picked one of the because the plumbing service, as you guys know who work with us, that we have sam for every service we have a uh, template landing page is available. So this is the plumbing landing page. For now, he's using the plumbing landing page. So again, emphasizing a good landing page is a very very important part of it, right? So he's just kind of that's the one he's using for now to get it going. All right, campaign name. So yeah, can you stay on this sheet? So if you guys notice that we talked about, oh, this is how you do campaign name, this is how you do, but really, how do you do it? The way you do it is you go to a spreadsheet and you set these up. So if you notice this, it's got ad group name, 
because we know we'll be expecting this. Headline one, headline two, headline three, all of them. Also, we have a character count on the right. So we don't end up typing. We don't want to go to Google and then figure out we got too many characters and we don't want to be wordsmithing there. You want to wordsmith and do all your work behind the scene in a spreadsheet or somewhere, uh, whatever other tool you like best, right? It could be Google Doc or, or, or Word Doc. So that's what we do. So we prepare all this, all the headlines are ready, the names are ready. Then the process becomes, that's what I was talking about, the iceberg, right? It's below the water is a lot of work. If you do that right, the top becomes very, very simple. That's what we have it ready here for you in this situation. Okay. Uh, there is a question. Can you tell us something about Google Ads, but visitor analytics to the landing page versus when you say scrolling, if you're meaning a general page, we will beat any good landing page will beat a regular page any day, yeah. any and every day, right? Without fail. Because landing page job is, the ads job is to make a promise. For example, if I'm looking, because we keep talking plumbing, so I'm going to change subject. Say it was, I'm looking for sheet metal roof. Is uh, uh, If I type sheet metal roof contractors, my ad needs to make the promise that, yes, we do sheet metal. So best sheet metal uh, contractors in Austin. If that's the headline, I'll say, oh, yeah, I needed sheet metal. And these guys are the best in the Austin and I'm in Austin. Okay, great. That's the promise. The promise is that these guys are the best. And then there is more description there. Uh, you know, so many five-star reviews or whatever is, comes in the description later. So that's the first promise that, yes, these guys do it. Then the landing page fulfills that promise by saying, hey, we do all kind of sheet metal roofs. So there will be pictures of the roofs. There'll be descriptions. Then there'll be reviews. So every stage marketing, uh, uh, I think it came from Ogilvy or wherever that every stage you're making a promise, then the business is fulfilling, Right. I really like that way of thinking that. So a landing page is the perfect contract. Basically it says, you showed me that an ad, I clicked on it. Now you're sending me, if you send me to a website, which has a roofing company talks about my grandpa started this company and I don't find the word sheet metal. It's hidden somewhere in the fourth page where I describe all kinds of roofs we do, I'm lost. I'm gone. In two seconds, I'm gone. I'm going to click on the second ad. In a landing page, my landing page will have sheet metal right there above the fold somewhere. And the form to sign up or to call us or set up an appointment will be right there. So that landing page will always and always beat because it's so, it, the intent matches with the landing page exactly. Not only that, your quality score will be very high with Google also once you match those two, right? So hopefully that answers Stephen's question there. How many leads that convert read scan entire page? Very few. Um, Justin, you build uh, build a yeah. uh, heat map company, so I mean, like ten percent or lesser, right? So uh, if they're if you're talking about scan the entire page that actually scroll down to the bottom, it's sub ten percent. Yeah, yeah, below. Yeah, it's 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 a. Uh, most people drop like 40, 50% drop off after above the fold. By the way. Yeah, so yeah. We, when you yeah. get most conversions from above the fold. Yeah, above the fold matters. You'll you'll see probably like between a like like obviously probably a 40, 50 percent drop um, when they see that fold line, uh, and then you lose pretty much everybody else after kind of like that second section. Yeah. Um, so your your most important content, your most clear content, needs to be right above there. Um, it's it's and, absolutely and, and and your most important. I mean, going to, this is the more of a landing page story, but your most important content is not about you. It's not about how you've been in business or your yeah. grandpa started your business. That's not yeah. what they care about. Yeah. I know, so I, know I know a lot of marketers say storytelling and all that stuff. Don't worry about that on landing pages. Be make sure it's consistent and that if you're there out hunting for the promise you made in the ad. Yeah. So yeah, the storytelling is for restaurants when Backpage tells you how the restaurant started, when you have nothing to do, when you're waiting for your food to arrive. That's when you read the stories. Those stories make a difference. That's that's the way I describe storytelling people. All right, bidding. All right, let's go. Clicks. We talked about clicks. We will be using clicks and, and campaigns search. So no display network, right? Google will try to force you to do everything because they want to take your money. All right. And in this case, we are doing Austin, Texas. Of course, 
in actual situations, we do zip codes and we do sub, uh, uh, like uh, uh, the, what is it called? The, the neighborhoods, right? It goes to that level. We break it down that way. In this case, Austin is probably fine. Okay. And we chose that presence, people regularly on targeted locations. So you're kind of seeing in action, he's quickly going through what I already showed you, the things to choose. English is the language in this case. All right. And he's gonna find the audience. It's, so that's how you find the audience, you type it. And if the business of like that exists, it'll show you that. No, actually search, uh, Brian, uh, the search terms are uh, very similar. Organic and uh, Google ad search terms, they really do cross over, organic uh, versus ads. So people will type exactly the same thing, plumber near me, right? So, uh, um, and plumber near me is a, you know, it's a high value search phrase for any Google ad or any near me for any business. So not much difference there, by the way. Yes, we use ClickSees. Mario is asking about installing StopClick software for bots. Yes, uh, I don't know about competitors' work. I'm not, yeah, competitors usually, if they're trying to do fraud intentionally, they'll get caught by Google. But generally, all this click forms in Russia or wherever, right? We use ClickSees for that. That catches it quite well. And we also have a, actually, we have a whole blog article where we actually publish this. We have a list of our old internal in spite of all that software, we found certain IP addresses and certain phone numbers are kind of uh, spammy and they're not covered by the software. So we have our own list. We also add it uh, in there, IP addresses, et cetera. And you should build your own list for sure. So if you notice, it goes really well if you have the name set already, right? And if you are used to, oh, I'm gonna just go and type the name there. Yeah, that's okay for maybe just for, uh, that's one of the things when you do, a lot of these courses, when they go through setting up, they don't look at it pragmatically. They say, oh, type the name here. Well, if you're thinking the name and typing there, that means you don't have no plan. plan. And eventually when you start running two or three clients, you're going to run into a situation you'll not know what's happening. Be very difficult to manage. And some other some other targeting questions that have been. Uh, there's a few other questions. Well, um, uh, John's showcasing kind of like what it what it takes to get an ad to get like an ad campaign together here. Um, so, uh, Avi, have you checked in the Q and A yet? I know uh, you've been no, kind of, I'll, I'll check back again. Yep. Yeah. So there's a few there. Um, and I think there's some good stuff in terms of targeting specifically like geography, bid adjustments. Um, the question about, um, stop cliff software was answered and then another, yeah. So mainly targeting and bid adjustments people want you to go over. I don't understand the question. Can you select? The geography, if you don't use targeting, especially for service business. By selecting, like, that's what you're choosing, basically, right? So, Bill, you want to add more there? And uh, QQ about targeting. Are zip codes more accurate than... Uh, no, um, zip codes are not necessarily more accurate. I prefer doing it by, if possible, by neighborhoods versus zip codes. Because zip code is kind of a little bit of an artificial boundary, right? And they just don't follow versus if you can get, you know, suburbs and the names of those, that's a better way to look at it, I think. And, and also keep in mind, Google is not that exact in drawing the boundary. So if you're thinking, I'll draw the line exactly, and then one meter on this side, it's other zip code, they will not go, no, it will. Because it's based on the internet service providers and any, many other things, so it's not gonna be exact. So don't fret too much over getting it exactly right, right? Uh, 
Okay. So Bill said he's good with it now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we have a few others in terms of like, do you add position to the headline? There's some headline questions and we all sorts of stuff yeah, coming yeah, in yeah, here now. The copy, uh, we will be talking about copy. Okay. The great. headline, uh, there is a there is a section on copy. I'll be coming to okay. it. Because, so, uh, because in the checklist, rest is more like a checklist we go through, but the I felt like ad copy deserves its own section. Yeah. You know? And um, do you care about ad strength? Yes. So basically that is an indication from Google, right? So uh, we do care about that. Cool. And then are broad match, phrase match, or exact match keywords best? Uh, you <laughs> That's start a with loaded generally... question. Yeah. So yeah, basically the general idea is when you're starting out, we don't know any better. You start with broad. And then that gives you enough keywords to know what all to negate and what all start going towards more exact, right? So that's, that's again, the funnel thing. Start out big with bigger holes, let everything in and kind of almost everything in. And then you start tightening. And and, and that's that's what we follow. All right, we have it ready. Evie, the campaign is now set up. Okay, so the camp, so any questions on campaign setup is like kind of a mechanical process. I wanted to emphasize if you have it ready, see how long it took. And somebody with, who's been doing this like done. Now, if you were thinking through while you were doing this, you'll be spending hours on this. Those hours should be spent a priori. Again, remember the iceberg underneath the water is where the work needs to be done, right? Not what shows up on top, right? So, uh, uh, so thank you, John. I think, uh, I, I, I don't think, are there any questions on setup? Now I'm going to get into more details on specifically about that copy and other things through checklist. If not, I'm going to uh, share my screen. Get that, get that started up again. Yes. Here. Is the right screen showing? Yes. And we are, I think I skipped this. Um, uh, I guess it was, this was the one he set up. I should have shown this slide. We did the, uh, a plumbing lead basically set up. So checklist. Now we are actually going through this. By the way, this 130 was not planned. It was, I mean, <laughs> it's counted later and came out to be 130, which I'm happy. It's exactly 130. It might not be 130 three months from now because we keep, uh, trying to get better at this, but it is 130 right now. Uh, business 101, we already covered. So it's part of our checklist. That's what I want to emphasize, right? This checklist, by the way, you'll, you'll have access to, you'll get the full checklist. So don't worry about that. There are certain things which are Google ads account level settings. And these seem obvious, but people do get them wrong. So we wanted to make them as a checklist, right? So I'm going to, skip through this because it's obvious we are running out of time. I want to focus on more interesting stuff, right? But you kind of see what it is. It's like everything is covered here. This will remind you if you have not thought through of things, right? That's the idea of the checklist, right? A Google Tag Manager, absolutely. Without that, there'll be no tracking. You got to do this. For remarketing, you want to set up re, uh, in advance Google Tag Manager also on their website, right? So standard stuff, kind of, uh, a lot of you probably know this, but it is a it's, I, we, we are very explicit in checking these things that they are set up right. Call tracking metrics is something which not all of you might be using it. We recommend some kind of a call tracking that requires its own setup. Uh, whis whisper messaging is this messaging. There's this call is being recorded and all. Usually we keep it off because we just want to quickly get the message in there. So these are the features we use to set up. Again, yours could be slightly different, right? But this, this is required. It's a checklist. Uh, this is conversion and destination pages as we want to load the destination page. We want to check heat map. We always start with heat maps on, on the landing page. Uh, 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 it might slow down the page in the beginning, but it's important to know exactly the question being asked that what happens after the fold, right? So after, you know, 40% drop off and then things like that can be seen on the heat map that allows us to also know if something is not working, if a button is wrong, et cetera. So I'm gonna, these are very, uh, 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 these are general, but very specific. So pay attention to these because of time reasons, I'm going to the more interesting stuff, right? Because this is mechanics in some ways. Uh, 
keywords, exactly. Bidding strategy, we already talked about it. Uh, search campaign setup. Go, we, I think we have gone through this also to some extent. Ad extensions are important. We don't use much because we are doing landing page. We don't want them to go to the site. So we, we don't, we use the call, uh, uh, call extension for, for uh, calls for sure. Uh, and make sure the automated extensions is disabled. But otherwise Google will start adding their own extensions and you don't want that. You lose control again. Uh, we actually checked that ad group naming convention was followed. Number of ads is there. Ad copy strength is good. Let's talk ad copy. So we are uh, uh, kind of, so if you guys don't mind hanging on a little bit longer because this is going to be interesting. This section is uh, really uh, interesting. Oh, by the way, yeah, a little bit plugs of our own tool. Hey, if you guys, best way to do ad copy, just copy other people's ad copies, right? And improve them. And PPC Reveal does exactly that, right? It gives you the whole shebang of who's running what kind of ad with what kind of ad copy. But that being said, how do you improve your own ad copy? So I talked about make a promise in ad and fulfill on the landing page so that the flow has to be there. And if you are using that DKI's dynamic keyword insertion, where whatever was typed in the search also shows up in the ad copy, be aware if you're using competitor terms, names, then that will show up in your ad copy. As long as you're aware that what will be the meaning of that, okay, you can use it. Also be aware that if you use the keyword is too long, there'll be a fallback keyword, which you should be using and that's what will be used. So these are like mechanics of ad copying copy you should know. So first thing, search term, whenever, whenever possible, your search term should be in headline, right? And the other one is use title case for headline. What is title case? Every letter is uppercase. Some people argue that you don't have to use prepositions in all uppercase. I say, just go for all, just do full, full uppercase. Uh, include CTA in the copy, very important. Imperative verbs like get it now, sign up now, anything which forces them to take action now kind of a thing. Use there, If you do a Google search, you'll find hundred or so imperative verbs which you can, so something will apply to you. So use one of those. You should and can refer to competitor directly or indirectly, as long as don't use their trademark terms. So this, this can be powerful many times, right? Because you are allowed to absolutely refer to it unless it's a trademark term, right? Um, if you have something in headline, a lot of people think, oh, in the description, I should not repeat that. I already said that headline, not true. Repetition is a good thing. Whenever you write any copy, by the way, if it is a good line, it should be repeated. Um, usually simpler is better. If you get something like a, you have numbers, you can add something is 2% is probably uh, uh, not the best example, like 40% more effective or 50% better. Whatever numbers you can use in the ad, it'll work, it'll help. Uh, anything to localize, there was, I think, a question. Anything you can use about the city name, et cetera, in localization in the copy, that will help. Uh, use punctuation. A lot of people completely skip punctuation that makes you actually stand out by using punctuation, right? But do a reminder on there uh, that headline you should you cannot use you should not use exclamation mark, but you can at other places, right? But otherwise, use punctuation and because punctuation can many times help you separate the words really well, especially commas and all. So don't skip them just because you're trying to squeeze in more words. Remember, simple is usually better. Anything you can do with the timeline or timeliness, do it like since June instead of saying we've been great for this. But if you give more specifically, so many served since this date, anything specific when you can reference that is better. Of course, FOMO always work. Sale ends in two days or any of those things will work. Countdown ads are possible. They're a little complex. Use them carefully. Very important. If you use a countdown ad, be aware that once the countdown runs out, the ad will stop running. So once you reach the two days, automatically that Google stops those ads. So be aware if you're doing those. They are complex, so be careful how you use them. We don't use them most of our time um, because we want an ongoing setup and promotion going on. So that's why we don't use them that often. This seems so obvious. Highlight features and benefits, but sometimes people kind of feel that they should not. If you're selling a soap, you should, this is coming from Ogilvy straight. 
if you're selling a soap, it doesn't matter how good it's, you got the best smell in the world, also say it cleans. It's useful because people need to know that this is not just a soap, it smells really great. It also cleans. So the features and benefits, whenever you can highlight them. Uh, sometimes, like people talk about, you should be, uh, uh, if the, like create the problem, create the pain, but if it is complex, you can focus on solutions. There is a way to still highlight and bring the pain point by actually focusing on the solution, right? We all know social proof part. I think it's obvious whenever possible. If you're going to say any awards, don't say general award, award-winning company. Don't say that. Like award winner of the awards for last three years, don't put the name of the years and whatever the award is. So anything you can get more specific is useful. General is just lost because they know you're a marketer. You're trying to make it big. So unless make big claims. When you get specific, then they believe you. Uh, now, you can use language which pre-qualifies people. It'll reduce your click-through rate. By this, I mean great for anybody who's making more than 5000 a month. If the ad says that, then obviously the people who make less than 5000 a month will not click on it. You disqualified them by putting that in ad copy. So your click-through will drop but your conversion rate will, will increase because it's the right people coming to the landing page. So you uh, pre-qualifying can be absolutely useful, right? We all have heard you got to use sentiments, right? So positive sentiment is the best, not the negative. But if you cannot, whatever reason phrase, negative is still better than no sentiment. So basically, if you have to pick between the, just get something, make it, make them think, right? Of course, uh, I think I'm being clever here. I came up with that. Use puns only when really good and funny. Otherwise, don't <laughs> use it. All right. So that's on ad copy. I was going through quickly. There are books on writing ads, etc. But this was very specifically a subset which applies to Google Ads is what I try to capture here. And that's what we try to use to check in our ads. Right. Any, any, any questions on this? On ads specifically, not a lot coming in on the ad copy side of things. Let's see if anything's popping up in the chat. Um, just more things. I think more. there's a lot more technical questions, and I think John's been handling a decent one of those. Um, but what we can see in here, and again, yeah, thanks, everybody, for sticking with us after time. Yeah, I know yeah, we're just, time is we're just about done. valuable. So audiences, of course, you know, we should use the audiences we talked about. This automated routine setup is important. We highly recommend using some kind of a scripting to manage overspend warnings. These are the kind of we use, you know, underspend warning in budget reach the months to pause it automatically, the low quality support alert, because we want to know those so we can fix it automatically. When you're running a lot of hundreds of accounts, you need these scripts. So these routines should be set up before you, this thing. Uh, and, and then of course, yeah, we final checks before we go live. And then a little bit, I did want to include Performance Max in case you decide to use lead gen for Performance Max. These are the guidelines, but we don't recommend Performance Max for lead gen, right? And if something is missing in this list, we'd love to hear from you guys, um, you know, through email or otherwise. We'd love to add those or answer those things if we didn't, because we wanted this to be truly a complete list, right? There we are, Justin. All right, yeah. So then you get to see Anna's happy face there. Um, so let's. Um, so real quick again, uh, while you're still here, we'll answer kind of. We'll go through all the questions. We'll stick around to get everything answered while we're here. I'm, I'm assuming the people who asked them, if they're still here, want those questions answered. Um, but yeah. So if you're still looking for help, if that was a little bit too much for everybody, like, hey, I don't actually want to <laughs> to build campaigns like John did, or you don't believe you could ever do it as fast as just being John's a machine. Uh, and the rest of our team as well. Like you should jump on and talk with Anna or or you actually might end up talking to me too. Uh, we have a bunch of people who are who are taking calls on those to uh, to see kind of what your business is all about. We we do specialize in working with people in the local service space. So if you're an agency that's running local like like ads for local service companies, we should be talking if you're looking to expand your business. Um, one of the other questions that we got in here because we flew through um, what we were doing what PPC reveal when you were talking about ad copy. Um, so PPC Reveal uh, is a tool that we developed initially internally to um, to really spy on our ads, like put in the keywords, set the location, see who's advertising and how and how well they're doing really. Like, like, are they showing up a lot? What does the ad actually look like? What are their offerings? 
and really breaking those types of things down. Um, that's a great way to one prospect and two also do kickoffs uh, when you're writing copy and you don't have to look at a blank page. You can see what people are actually doing and uh, either um, they either go in the opposite direction and offer something they're not or realize that there's certain table stakes that you have to be doing. So um, we have over what we we did a true launch of this thing back a like in August, like late August, early September, we have over 800 uh, active users in the in there right now. And they've done over half a million searches in that time, um, bringing in, I don't even know how many ads. Uh, it's an unbelievably powerful tool. So if you're in the space, you should probably check that out as well. Um, we use that with all of our partners. And if you become a partner, you actually get access to it yourself. So jump on a call with Anna. Um, you'll likely run into her or you might see me. I, take, I like to take around 10% of the calls as well. So, um, so with that, we'll move into the actual, the last bit of questions that have come in. I think there's a decent number of I think we've been answering it. At least on the Q&A side, we've been answering them all. Uh, yeah, and, and then we have are... a decent number in the chat okay, uh, as well. Through, I'll look through the chat, yeah. Now. Yeah. Let's see if we have anything else. Oh, yeah. We don't use site links because we are using landing page. We want the traffic to stay there. Instead, we do the call extensions basically of where there is a phone number which shows up with the ad directly, right? We do use that extension. That was the uh, that was a question from Sue. All right, I'm moving back up, scrolling up. Uh, John, you want to answer this? Are there search extensions that are enabled most often for local service business? Yes, those are the uh, call out extensions. Uh -huh. uh, call extension. Uh, we also use uh, the location extension provided that GMB is connected. Yep, yes. those are the extensions that we normally so we, use. Yeah, we either use the call and the GMB. Those are the only ones. We don't use the rest of them because they kind of distract detract and send people to places where we cannot track what happened. Okay, and then... Brian was asking a question about how do ad search terms differ from organic search terms? Yeah, I, I did answer that. Okay, There's really okay. Not missed a that one early. It's basically, okay. in fact, if you guys look at SEO, one good way to know what matters is you look at the terms, which what is the cost of the term that kind of indirectly tells you that is a good value uh, organic term. That was a, uh, uh, I've not been doing too much proactive SEO now, but that was our way of saying run ads, uh, run ads for small budget to find out what search terms organically you should optimize for was a great way to do it. So yeah. they're kind of same thing. If somebody's willing to pay for a phrase, that must be valuable, which means it must be great for organic. So the question was like, hey, plumber near me. Plumber near me is a great organic term. At the same time, it's a great, uh, Google Ads term too. Yeah. Great. And let's see if we, if we don't have, um, so what, one question in the Q and a that's, it's a bit ambiguous and it's anonymous. So I'm not sure that is the thing, is this all we have to do for ads running and, and get more leads or is there optimization after that? So are they saying, is it set and forget is my guess? Like once it's set, you're ready to go. Is that the case? I guess is what they're asking. Uh, I didn't quite catch the question again. So, so they're saying is all we have to do for Google ads is we follow this setup process and no, leads just start no, coming in. No, no. So uh, I'll tell you. So yeah, we have a daily list yep. also. And we were, we, it's a separate checklist. We have a daily, weekly, monthly checklist, what we do. I'll give you some, some insights on some of the things. That, uh, uh, that's what John, Raj, and their team does that on Google ads accounts, right? Basically, Every day, there'll be some clicks on terms which are new, which we have not seen before. We look at that term and say, oh, makes sense. We did not think of it. This might be, should be even exact match. Let's put it in there. Or, oh, this needs to be negative. So that's the most common one, right? That has to be looked at daily basis. And then if you are targeting competition, then you will behave with the term, with the uh, competition's name differently versus if you want to avoid competition, then you will be taking every competition term and putting it as a negative. So that's the other aspect which happens. These things happen daily basis. Weekly basis, you're looking for the trends, right? Is the CPM, the cost per meal is going up or not? If it is, how what is our spend doing? Our click-through rate, is it doing, uh, the, what is the trend going there? Is it dropping or not? Our conversion rate, 
whatever it is, we want, we like it double digit and preferably 30, 40% uh, conversion. If it is, it's consistently staying there. If not, why not? What happened? So those, those things keep happening and Google does keep changing knobs and the meaning of knobs also on a monthly basis for almost every few months. So we play with those knobs. The only way to know the results of those knobs is by turning them, right? So, so that's, uh, so there's an ongoing activity. Uh, otherwise what will happen is you set it up. In fact, once you set it up after that first month, there's a lot of activity. Then second month, there is a more stabilized activity. Third month, there's activity. Then you start even thinking, okay, our landing page is performing really well. Now we want to do a, we want to change it. We want to do the ad rotation because there is a something called ad fatigue. The same ad has been showing up again and again for, especially if you're trying to get to the same crowd. So you need to roll out new ads. So there is a absolutely ongoing work. So that's yeah. awesome. I think, right. uh, I think we're getting a few more in, um, but we will probably, we'll probably, th this will probably be, um, will we get access to the pre-made niche templates? I, 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 I'm assuming. Is uh, there was some, the... what is this? Will you mention PPC reveal or? Oh yeah. That's what, that's what I just, I, I sent them a message and that's why I brought it up again at oh, the okay. end. Okay. You did cover that. Yeah. And, yeah. and what else is there? Open, uh. Oh, Sue had a question about anchor links on her landing page for uh, call outs on site links. Is that a good idea or not? So on, on uh, anchor links on, on. So on she has the anchor links on her, on her landing page and she's using those anchor yeah. links in the site links. So it's pushing to the page. It's just anchoring to a different spot of the landing uh, page. Uh, I think great idea. Yeah. That's a, that's smart. <laughs> I, I, I've not, but, I've not had not thought of that. Yeah. I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. That's awesome. And then, yeah, yeah that's, that's a really smart move, Sue. Awesome. Yeah. And then Brian, yeah, I mean, is there a minimum ad spend we require to run ads? It's going to depend on the businesses themselves. So uh, set up a time with uh, Anna or me or whomever, uh, and we'll let, we'll kind of work with you through that. But yeah, like certain niches require certain levels of spend due to um, the competition factor is all. All right. all right. Awesome. So man, thanks, everybody. I think about 80% of the people stayed until the end. So thank you so much for sticking with us on this one. Um, this was, you know... A, a, a group effort for sure on this uh like the, the team thank you um john raj avi like i came here and i'm just the moderator today normally i can like, get in too but it's been fun uh to to be a part of this and just see kind of one like how many of you showed up and stuck around to the end so thank you all so much